Welcome to Some Arts, the Somerville Arts Calendar Show produced by the Somerville Media Center. I'm Dave Ortega, Programming Coordinator for Somerville Community Access Television. Let's have a look at what August has to offer in Somerville. The Somerville Public Library invites you to its first Somerville Public Library staff art show. The show features paintings, collages, sculptures, photos, and crafts for more than 15 staff members. The opening reception will take place on Friday, August 4th at 4.30 p.m. Light refreshments will be served. The show will be on display in the library auditorium from August 1st to August 31st. For more information, visit www.somervillepubliclibrary.org. Somerville Media Center continues its August Cinema Somerville Outdoor Movie Series at the Somerville Growing Center at 22 Vinyl Ave. This pop-up movie series is free to the public and starts at 7.30 p.m. with a BYO picnic, with movies starting at 8.30 p.m. once it's dark. Seating is limited. Moviegoers are encouraged to bring their own portable seats, blankets, and lawn chairs. August 3rd, see the Union Square Local Short Film Fest, which includes submissions from local filmmakers. August 10th, see the legendary Night of the Living Dead from 1968 by the late, great George Romero. August 17th, see local youth-made films at Outtakes, the Somerville Media Center Youth Film Festival. And on August 24th, see the 1960 version of Little Shop of Horrors with Jack Nicholson. I had a chance to speak with Nina Eichner about two events produced by the Somerville Arts Council. Summer Streets coming up on Sunday, August 6th in Teal and Davis Squares and Ignite Festival on Saturday, August 19th in Union Square. So here I am talking with Nina Eichner from the Somerville Arts Council. Yeah. Hey Nina. Hi Dave. It's, Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure having you here. Yeah. Some arts. Great to be here. Um, August in August. Somerville. Yeah. Now you're coming off of a very, very busy season. It's true. Um, summer is huge for the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff behind you. What's, what's in store for August? Yeah, so August we have two great events. September is really full, which we'll get to next time. But August we only have um, two big festivals. Um, one on Holland Street um, near Davis and Teal Square and one right here in the square. So we kind of um, have two things to focus on. Um, the one on Holland Street is Summer Streets, which we do in different locations throughout the city in the summer and fall. It's a big interactive street festival, two stages of music, a beer garden, a 90-foot water slide. Whoa. Uh, Esch Circus Arts doing their rig. <laughs> of great stuff going on there. How's the water slide going to work? So um, basically it's a bouncy house obstacle course, picture like one of those bouncy obstacle courses. Okay. Um, you climb through each like section, you know, over different things, under different things. Then the last part is like a water slide. We had it for the first time last year, it was a big hit. So oh, bring awesome. it back again. So like people should come in their bathing attire? Yes, exactly. Or their clothes if they want to get wet. If they want to get wet, yes. okay, great. Be prepared. Um, and you, you mentioned beer gardens and food. Yep, Aeronaut's providing a beer garden. The Somerville Flea will be down by Davis Square and they're um, sponsoring the stage down there and then there'll be a stage up by Teal Square as well. And then we have lots of really interesting, fun, interactive activities on the whole route as well as business sponsors and craft vendors and food and just a nice time to get out in your neighborhood and talk with your neighbors, be active. Um, Mass Dot is actually um, doing a trial bike lane mm. on Holland Street because we don't have bike lanes on Holland Street. So they'll be setting up a temporary bike lane for people to try out what a bike lane would be like there. They'll have bikes for people to ride and that should be interesting. To test out the bike lane. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. And it give people a sense of what it would be like to have a bike lane there and kind of get to talk about bike lanes in the city and bike safety. And from Teal Square to Davis Square, right. that's about, what, a five block stretch? It's about a half mile, actually. Oh, okay. A little less, yeah. So maybe 10 blocks or so. Yeah. That'll be, that's fun. A good stretch. Yeah. Yeah, we try to, for the Summer Streets Festivals, we try to shut down about a half mile of a street on different busy streets throughout the city. So we do Broad, Lower Broadway, Holland Street, Highland Ave, and Somerville Ave. So it really gives people a chance for one day a year to be in the street and walk around and get to do, be active, but not be in cars and have the street open to people instead of cars. 
Wow, yeah, fantastic. That's great. So that's and August 6th. August 6th, um, which is a Sunday? Yep, it's a Sunday um, coming up, Sunday from 2 to 6 p.m. From 2 to 6 p.m., yeah. great. What kind of um, live music yeah, uh, so can we expect? There'll be, all, there'll be a mix. Um, it's going to be some rock, some folky kind of music, acoustic. Um, we have Dana from Civic playing. Um, Civic is a local band, and Parks, um, which is also a local band. And then the School of Honk um, often plays at Summer Streets, and they'll be playing um, as well. They'll be parading up Holland Street and ending at the stage in Teal Square and playing a set up there. Oh, great. And so the School of Honk, it's the activist marching band yeah, that yeah. is featured so heavily in Honk Fest coming right. up in the fall. Yeah, and School of Honk is actually a local initiative by some of the founders of the local Honk Festival. And basically how it works is they meet every Sunday and anyone can come in, they'll teach you how to play um, a brass instrument and you can play in the band and then they parade around for two hours every week somewhere in Somerville. Mm. And so on the days of summer streets they parade at our festivals and it's people of all ages and people of all experience levels and anyone can join. It's a really great project. So is it BYOB, bring, bring your own brass? <laughs> In that instance? Yeah, but that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, you can bring your own instrument if you have one, or they'll provide you with one oh. and teach you how to play it if you don't have one, which is okay. awesome. Just so bring anyone a handkerchief go. to wipe yeah. the mouthpiece. A little, a little uh, disinfectant. All right. Yeah. Great. That that's definitely something to look forward to. Should be fun. And then um, the other um, festival that you mentioned yeah. right outside here. Right here behind us is the Ignite Festival. Ignite Festival. It'll be, I believe, the Seventh, sixth or seventh year of the festival. Um, and Ignite is a food and fire festival and um, it, it features fire performers, um, fire throwers and people who do that kind of thing from the Boston Circus Guild who we've worked with for many years and they're great. Um, and we also focus, we've focused even more in the last few years on the food and culture aspect. Mm -hmm. So we have um, about a dozen food vendors and they're all, almost all from Somerville. This year I think they'll all be from Somerville and they're almost all immigrant owned restaurants from different cultural backgrounds. So we try to represent all the different types of food available in Somerville from different backgrounds and different cultures. And then we also try to represent different cultural backgrounds, different cultural heritage and different arts um, it, through dance and music. So we'll have performers. Last year we had a taiko drumming group. Um, this year we're having bangra dancing. Um, we're gonna have um, hopefully a lion dance troupe, um, all oh, female wow. lion dance troupe which would be great um, as What does well. that entail, a lion dance? Um, so lion dancing is a Chinese dan arts art form, which is um, this big dragon head um, that, you know, this huge crafted dragon head that has kind of like a body and people are under it moving oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they do it for Chinese New Year and other festivals. And um, they're going to come and do a performance and then have an opportunity for kids to get to learn about the tradition and try on the costume which would be really cool. Oh, wow. Um, we also have a group, um, this artist, uh, Basil, who's doing the Fine Arts Superhero, which mm. is a project of his where um, people dress up in these amazing um, arabesque-inspired costumes, um, just really cool kind of superhero costumes, but um, fine art, I guess, not kind of your traditional superheroes. And they do, they kind of move around the crowd and interact with people, so they'll be coming to perform. Um, They'll, there's going to be lots of roving performers like magicians and illusionists and fortune tellers and so all the that kind of art music um, mixed into a food festival and a fire festival and the fire festival and the fire yeah, yeah I, I I've been to the fire festival mm -hmm. it's really memorable yeah seeing the 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 different performers interact yeah. with fire and yeah. do all these like crazy tosses yeah, exactly. with batons that are on fire and the Somerville yeah. Fire Department <laughs> ringing the whole carefully, <laughs> watching, carefully watching the situation. I should say yes, yeah. uh, the perimeter. So to make sure it's all very safe. Exactly, and it's fun. It's fun. The fire the fire aspect was kind of one of the key parts in the beginning, and as we've gone along, we've built up the cultural aspects, the international aspects, and um, different dance and music and um, things from all different cultures and backgrounds and so it mixes nicely in with the fire and it's an evening festival so we try to have a lot of different um, interesting lighting, light installations and the fire obviously goes well at night so 
try to bring all the artists we bring often, you know, they wear colorful costumes and things that really stand out at night. And we're really um, focused on the lighting. You know, we turn off the street lights in Union Square and do specific lighting for the festival to really make all the colors pop. And it just has a really like fun feel to it. We try to make it really feel like a street festival that you'd run into in a lot of different cities and countries around the globe. And by that point in the summer, the sunset's already like creeping yeah. in a little earlier. Yeah. So yeah. you we get a nice time. long dusk exactly. to enjoy yeah. the, the lighting. Exactly. So the festival's August 19th and it's 6 to 10. And so you have a first hour and a half, two hours that are more daytime. We have kids activities. Um, people are eating and hanging out. And then as it gets darker, we have the fire performance. Um, and then really dancing at the end. It's just very festive and fun. Great. Yeah, and at this point, it is a, a really fun late summer tradition yeah. in Union Square yeah. put on by the Arts Council. Yeah, I think people really look forward to it, and it's, it gets bigger every year. So clearly it's something that people find interesting, and I think it's, it's really great that we focus on trying to get different performers and different artists um, and food vendors every year so that there's always something new to try or get to see when you come to the festival. So it's always different. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, now what about... Um, not getting into too much detail, what about yeah. a preview for um, some fall things yeah, coming up? Yeah, absolutely. I believe it's already going to be fall. It's crazy. We're already heading into August. Um, but September is going to be a great month. It's always a good month, month for festivals. Um, I'll just run them off for you, a few of them. Sure. Um, we have the Dog Festival that happens at Trump Field, um, which is super fun. We have the Rock and Roll Yard Sale, which is a um, DIY uh, craft market that focuses on uh, records and rock and roll kind of uh, clothing, things like that, uh, posters, uh, prints. Um, we have Fixer Fair, which is with parts and crafts, mm. where um, you can bring your old things that maybe you'd throw out otherwise and they'll teach you how to fix them and reuse them instead. Um, so that's a really fun one. That's great. I rewired a lamp. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Maybe you should be a vendor teaching people how to do that at the festival. I don't know if I could teach anybody. <laughs> but you did it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. There you go. Um, and then also in September we have another Summer Streets Festival up on Highland Ave. Um, last year we had two stages with um, both stages had all female musicians. We fe featured girls rock band and our local uh, blow wrestling group. Um, so we're going to do that again, that's on Highland Ave. And then um, the end of the month we have the Fluff Festival. Fluff Festival. This is the 10th year that the Fluff Whoa. Festival is happening in Union Square. So it's an extra exciting anniversary year. We're going to celebrate 10 years of innovation and um, we're also celebrating the 175th anniversary of the city. Um, so we're looking at all these anniversaries and kind of innovation in the past of Somerville and innovation moving forward in the city. Definitely something to look forward to. Yeah. Well, Going thank on. you for um, chatting with yeah, me, Nina. Yeah, thank you for having me. Always good to be here. Yeah, always a pleasure. Cool. Some arts. <laughs> yeah. The first ever Local Weird Film Festival will be a night of strange, locally made films on Wednesday, August 16th at Warehouse 11 in Union Square, starting at 7 p.m. The Weird Local Film Fest will be spooky, wonderful, awkward, comforting, discomforting, Quiet, loud, happy, sad, hilarious, and definitely insta-worthy. It's a good event to go to if you need to bump up your indie credibility on social media. Food and snacks provided. Suggest a donation of $5. The Weird Local Film Festival is presented by Fallon, Lee O'Brien, and Peter Levine, and sponsored by Somerville Media Center and Warehouse 11. For their fifth annual event, on August 20th, starting at 9 a.m., Race to the Row will be back with a series of events through Assembly Square and along the Mystic River. This race offers a fast mile, a 5K, and a free kids fun run. The 5K is open to runners, walkers, teams, and families of all ages and abilities, ending with a fun-filled post-race party with food, drinks, and beer served from the local restaurants and businesses. Some of the proceeds from Race to the Row are donated to East Somerville Main Streets, so please sign up at Somerville Roadrunner's website, www.srr.org. On August 25th, Chucky Harris Park in East Somerville turns back into an outdoor theater for the first time since 2009, when Somerville Media Center, in partnership with East Somerville Main Streets and Arlington International Film Festival, 
present a selection of international short films. Before the films, enjoy music, food, and yes, a beer garden. Then, at 8.30 p.m., enjoy a selection of contemporary live action and animated shorts from Ireland, Brazil, Spain, Germany, Iran, Italy, and the U.S. That's August 25th at Chucky Harris Park. Look out for the final film in this outdoor series on September 29th. More information can be found at somervillemedia.org. Come to the Aeronaut Brewing Company on Sunday, August 27th from 3 to 5 as the Somerville Media Center teams up with Malden Access TV for the August Community Media Mixer. Get to know Somerville Media Center and Malden Access TV members and get information about upcoming classes, membership, programs, events, and more as you drink craft ales and listen to free live bluegrass bands. Members, fans, and anyone curious about community media are encouraged to attend. We hope to see you there. The Silence Please 35mm silent film series at the Somerville Theatre continues on Sunday, August 27th with the 1927 film Get Your Man, starring silent film legend Clara Bow. Live musical accompaniment will be by Jeff Rapsis. After spending an accidental night together in a Paris wax museum, Clara Bow and Charles Rogers find themselves in love to the relief of Rogers' aristocratic fiancée, Josephine Dunn. The irresistible Bow was at the height of her popularity when she made this comedy with Hollywood's leading female director, Dorothy Arzner. Missing scenes have been filled out by stills and newly discovered footage in this 35mm restoration from the Library of Congress. Get your tickets for this August 27th screening at the Somerville Theatre box office or at somervilletheatre.com. That's it for August for Some Arts, the Somerville Arts Calendar Show produced by Somerville Media Center. We encourage you to get out to each of these events or at any of the other arts-related events in Somerville and in the Boston metro area. If you have an event you'd like to list on Some Arts, send an email to programming at somervillemedia.org and include event details like date, time, and description. For Somerville Media Center, I'm Dave Ortega. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next month.